Our next story comes from the Daily Star. Mysterious pneumonia more deadly than coronavirus sweeps across Asia. Kazakhstan's health ministry said it had recorded more than 32,000 cases and 451 deaths from pneumonia in June, a fatality rate rate higher, uh, rate four times higher than 12 months before. A deadly unknown pneumonia that has a higher death rate than COVID-19 is understood to have broken out in Kazakhstan, Chinese officials warned. The Chinese embassy, which quoted local media reports, said Atarao and Oktobi counties, as well as Skimkent County, they have cool place names in Kazakhstan, had seen a spike in cases of the illness since mid-June. Kazakhstan's health ministry said it recorded more than 32,000 cases of pneumonia, 451 deaths from the illness between June 29 and July 5th alone. The embassy said the Central Asian nation had 1,772 deaths in the first half of the year, including 628 last month, some of whom were Chinese nationals. It then described the sickness as an unknown pneumonia, even though officials in Kazakhstan did not say whether there was anything unusual about it. As a spokesman for the embassy said, the death rate of this disease is much higher than the novel coronavirus. The county's health departments are conducting comparative research into the pneumonia virus, but have yet to identify the virus. <sighs> Welcome to the new normal, ladies and gentlemen. <sighs> Another time when I just hate to say I told you so, but I told you so. And as optimistic as I always am for the future of humanity, I must still step back and take stock of how much this coronaphobia crisis, the fear crisis, has set humanity back. Perhaps not as bad or in the same way as a new war that might kill millions. There will be a death toll from this. The cure clearly being worse than the disease when it comes to the lockdowns and shutdowns and everything else in the United States. Right now, it feels like there is a cloud over the world. A cloud of fear, anger, worry, frustration, loneliness, despair, economic desperation for millions of people, possibly billions looking around the world. And the optimist in me says, it's okay, Adam, we'll get over this too. The fog will lift and this too shall pass. But that's not being fair, is it? It's not like a cloud that a stiff breeze can push away or dissipate. The fog of fear has a stickier toxicity to it. The whole thing about masks and distancing. Be afraid of your fellow human beings. The dominance of the conversation with virtue signaling and bullying people into compliance. And if you don't wear a mask, you killed my grandma. You think that's good for peace and love and harmony? Or humanity's great dance forward? No. I must, as a journalist, attempting to prevent, excuse me, uh, presenting the most accurate worldview that I'm capable of, I cannot sit back and say, it's okay, guys, sit tight, things are going to be cool. No. And this story, again, I hate to say I told you so, but there are going to be more viruses. 
real or imagined doesn't matter. There are enough real ones that they now can use this propaganda template to blow up into some new fear phenomena that gets us all to cower and submit to government edicts again. Or that government can adequately use as an excuse to keep people shut in at home. Okay, maybe not shut in at home, but to keep millions of Americans out of work. Yeah, there's force behind that. What happens if you go to a job that government is deemed non-essential in this crisis? In some, but not all cases, the government be it in the form of a letter from a bureaucrat or a knock on the door from a sheriff's deputy or a cop, they might ask polite and say, you know, we, we really appreciate if you don't do this and if you don't stop, we'll come back. But what's that come back? We'll come back and we'll issue you a citation and you'll be required to show up in court if you don't and you don't pay the citation. Eventually, we're just going to come and take it from you. And that's in the nice cases. In the not nice cases, people are actually getting arrested. We've seen SWAT teams raiding bars, operating illegally. Not unlawfully, but illegally under the technical rules of this regime that we are under today the corona regime. We must stay vigilant. This is a huge setback. This is a cloud of toxicity, of fear, and all the negative emotions that go along with it. I hope that is not the new normal, even if governments using health scares as the excuse to further exploit us is. We go to LMT Online, Beijing's secret police get a room with a view in Hong Kong. Nice kind of tongue-in-cheek way of putting it. When China's state security officials came to town, they needed a home and fat. So they did what any newcomer would do. They sequestered a 33-story hotel with a rooftop pool and panoramic harbor views then erected seven-foot-high barriers to limit public access to their new digs. Hey, it's okay. It's a hotel. It's just a hotel. You weren't using it anyway because of the corona shutdown. It's no big We're just going to, you know, while you're not using it, we're just going to commandeer this whole building for government. Now, in the United States, we have eminent domain. Government can and does do the same thing, although perhaps not as blatantly as in China. And what they're doing here and really in China and throughout the rest of the world is taking over property through the financial manipulations, right? If we can shut down your business. Now, is it, the, hold on a second, is it the government or government's moneyed friends? It's really both in this case. But when the people who own a business are shut down and have to close the business, just abandon the business, just shut it down completely. Real estate is going to be affected. Commercial real estate is going to be affected by that, as we've covered in this show. Real estate in general, everything except uh, rural real estate, uh, urban and suburban plunging right now. Uh, people still looking to buy uh, property in rural areas like where we are here in Gardenia. The effect of these prices plummeting timed with this crisis is not unanticipated by the people who engineered it. Because what happens when everybody's desperate for money and everything costs pennies on the dollar? They're going to be able to buy up all of these shutdown businesses. You're going to see a huge economic consolidation. It's just Fun to see how it's happening so blatantly and overtly in China. Early Wednesday, under a heavy police presence and before any public announcement about the matter, officials inaugurated the Office for Safeguarding National Security of the Central People's Government, 
in the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region at a ceremony that took place behind water-filled barricades. They played the Chinese national anthem and raised the Chinese flag, though local media weren't invited. When the ceremony was over, reporters were finally able to photograph the building's front door. The Metro Park Hotel on the edge of the city's Causeway Bay District will be the initial base for the new agency tasked with collecting intelligence and implementing a new law that sharply curtails political freedoms as Beijing takes fuller control of the territory after anti-government protests last year. Now, I'm not an expert on Hong Kong. You know, I follow the news. I know what's relevant and what's going on there. I'm not going to try to call this one way or another. But it does look like the people of Hong Kong are going to lose and the government of China is going to win. But if that's the way it goes, what you are going to see is the clearest historical example we have of the failure of central planning with irrefutable data to back it up. Because what we saw historically in Hong Kong going to be a British colony as opposed to part of the Chinese empire resulted in a boom of the economy rare in world history. Truly amazing. While China was able to say, well, well, we're still booming, manufacturing, look, we've got a billion people and, you know, cities are, are growing and we have billionaires and yada, yada, yada. But do you know, well, getting rid of Chinese rule for more economic freedom led to the economic boom. And the statistics for this are irrefutable at this point historically. And the you want to look at like the average wage of people in China versus Hong Kong. Gee, it's going to be pretty apparent what system works. But what happens when it goes backwards? Hong Kong goes back to Chinese rule. First, they take the political freedoms, then the economic freedoms, and then you're going to see another example of the failure of statist central economic planning unfold in real time. Looking forward to covering that story. But right now, covering China, there's one other story that we really have to bring into this from Bitcoin.com, specifically news.bitcoin.com. Escalating bank runs spur Chinese government to require approval for large cash transactions. Whoa. Yeah. Bank runs. Well, I bet you were waiting for this to happen in the coronaphobia crisis. Well, it's happening in the United States. Not quite bank runs, but why is the dollar not losing value? There has been a rush to liquidity in the panic selling among so many people around the world that has provided a temporary effect of propping up the prices of fiat currency. And that hoarding has led to significant withdrawals even in the United States. In China, What's it looking like? A series of bank runs has prompted the Chinese government to begin requiring approval for large cash deposits and withdrawals at commercial banks, starting with banks in a northern province. Recently, two bank runs happened within a week as people lost faith in financial institutions amid, amid unprecedented economic contraction. China has launched a measure aimed at curbing bank runs. Starting July 1st, residents of the northern province of Hebei, Hebei, Hebei are required to apply for approval if they plan to make large cash deposits or withdrawals at commercial banks. The South China Morning Post reported Sunday, quote, the regulation comes after a series of bank runs in the past year at debt-laden small lenders and as an unprecedented pandemic-related economic contraction starts to take a toll. 
Now, this is the big fraud of the government banking system exposed, right? The banking system basically says, give us your money and we'll hold it for you. And we will provide uh, adequate mechanisms and, and convenient ways for you to access your money and to spend it, to write checks and have debit cards, as well as provide security for you. And if any of your money goes missing, we'll replace it or, you know, we'll, we'll it's, it's safer in our vaults than it is under your mattress. So, and, and, you know, we can have you in an interest bearing account. You'll actually make money keeping it with us. So, you know, please keep, keep your money with us. This is where your money is safe. Well, there's a big lie behind that because it's not true. In this system where the banks are subservient to government, if government decides, well, eh, or the other way around, but where banks, if you want to say governments are subservient to banks, then the banks get to use the government as the excuse to screw you and say, well, we can't give you your money because government said you need their permission to move any cash right now. Sorry. Now, this is all aside from the fact that every fiat currency is being continuously devalued through inflation. That is the inflation of the monetary supply. So you have more dollars or whatever currency chasing the same number of goods and services in the market. And so prices go up. The increase in prices, price inflation, is not really the cause or an organic cause of this phenomena. It is a product of the fiat currency system. Now, we couldn't talk about the banks in China without, and well, we've certainly covered plenty about what's going on with banks in the United States as it relates to that. But from Bloomberg, we also get another important related story via yahoo.com. Banks poised to get be windfall from small business stimulus. And right away, wait, wait a second. There's another loop of money here and someone profiting who shouldn't be. Jim is zooming in on that chart for us. Lending heavyweights, the top 10 PPP lenders arranged more than $120 billion in loans. Big ones there, B of A and JP Morgan on the right side. And then uh, you know, the, the next Truist, PNC, Wells Fargo, TD Bank, Key, U.S. Bank, Zions, m &T. Earlier this year, thousands of lenders rushed to arrange loans under the U.S. government's Paycheck Protection Program. Now, some of them will be rewarded handsomely. Shocking, right? More than 30 banks across the country, including dozens of community banks and some lenders, with more than $1 billion in assets could generate fees that surpass their 2019 net revenue before set-asides for loan losses, according to a study distributed Tuesday by S&P Global Market Intelligence. The firms that will reap the biggest gains are the ones that punched above their weight in arranging loans for the rescue program. Can they still call it a rescue program with a straight face covering it in a story like this? The Small Business Administration's $669 billion Paycheck Protection Program was launched in April as part of the $2 trillion CARES Act passed by Congress to help the U.S. economy through the coronavirus pandemic. The program was initially marred by confusion and technological glitches as banks, large and small, raced to secure loan funding for their clients. So, you know, we talk about this from the beginning. We, we've looked at this like, you know, asking the question, how much of a conspiracy is this? Because I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I don't deal in theories. I deal in reality. I'm a conspiracy realist. So the big question is, how coordinated is this conspiracy behind the coronaphobia crisis? And when you look around the world, you see what's happening in China. In, in Hong Kong, with the banks and, 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 and the rest of China and Europe, all the major financial centers, what all the governments are doing with the financial manipulation that they're able to use this virus as the excuse for. I'm tempted away from the idea that, well, when, when I actually, when I look at that, I should say I'm tempted to think that this is all a, a really big conspiracy. That like they they they're that the financial elites, the people who run these banks, saw the virus, saw that there was some fear brewing in China, and they said, you know what? 
let's go global with this one, boys. Yeah, let's take this fear phenomenon global. Let's let's tell our pals in the media that they got to push this, or what? We don't have to we don't have to tell them. Uh, we we just tell hey, do we, we we demand? Hey, Fox News, if you don't play into the coronaphobia pandemic, uh, we'll just ruin your business. They can do that. Even if they can't do it openly, directly by just pulling funding or loans or what have you. These are the same people behind the warfare state funded by central banks, right? Ron Paul said it best. It is no coincidence that the century of total war coincided with the century of central banking. Surprise, surprise. But when I look at the government's responses around the world being as patchwork as they are, varied from place to place, I think there's no way there's a singular global conspiracy here. They'd have to be better coordinated than this. And so until recently, I've been pretty committed to the position that there is no singular global conspiracy here, right? That it's kind of a fear bandwagon. Everybody's just jumping on. There are a lot of little conspiracies, right? I mean, members of Congress working with lobbyists to enrich them. They're, they are conspiring to rip you off. And what is government but one big conspiracy, of course, to take advantage of the rest of us? So there's that sort of ongoing reality of people conspiring pre-pandemic. But then I look at stories like this, <clears throat> and I see this chart, and you go, top 10 lenders. These were the ones. You could have had, at some point in the development of this crisis, a singular conspiracy primarily behind it now. I don't discount that possibility. Each one of the bars on this graph represents an organization that may be headed and controlled by one man or woman, but is still essentially subsidiary to the Federal Reserve System. It reminds me of Bill Hicks' theory of the presidency, right? That when you get elected, you go into a dark, smoke-filled room and a projector screen pops down and film pops on and they show you a shot of the Kennedy assassination from an angle you've never seen before. And then the lights come on and as he, as he calls them, a bunch of rich, white, greedy capitalists scumbag industrialists smoking cigars and one of them turns to you as the newly elected president and says any questions and the only one you're allowed is what's my agenda so i don't know i can't say anymore but the more i look at the financial manipulation happening around the coronavirus crisis the more I see bigger conspiracies well-organized to rip us all off in contrast to the government's chaotic confusion around its lockdown policies, which is a great distraction from what's really going on.